The peace of Christ be with you. A few worship notes as we begin this Sunday. You'll notice we're back in the sanctuary. It's not perfect, the shot composition isn't just right. I have to have this microphone this close or it will reverberate too much. You might hear construction sound in the background, but we wanted to be back in here for you. 
One other note, if you're looking to sing along with the music of the hymns, we only display the words on the slides, but the music is always included in the bulletin which we put on the website each week. You may want to check that out, particularly if the hymns are new to you. And now as we gather, let us do what we always do. Take about three deep breaths that we might be opened. Our awareness might recognize the presence of the Spirit within us, around us, and among us. And now let us worship in beloved community. Our song of grateful praise. For the beauty of the earth, for the joy of ear and eye, with thankful hearts we raise our song. please join me in our call to worship. For the gift of this time, we give you thanks, O God, for the gift of ourselves and those who love us. Create in us a gentle space for all that has been created, for the physical world that holds our reality. Let us learn to worship with our every sense. Would you join me in the singing of our first hymn, Sacred the Body? virtually at Westminster Presbyterian Church. Whether you're with us on YouTube or Facebook or our website or however you have found us, it is good to be here together. 
For those of you who like to worship early, we have now started to premiere our worship video on YouTube at 8.30 in the morning. So know that that is an option for you. It will then, of course, stay on YouTube for the rest of the day and the week for whenever it works for you to watch it. Our Facebook premiere will continue to remain at 10 a.m. With the easing of some of the shelter-in-place restrictions, Rob and I have made it here to the sanctuary to record our videos. We're recording separately, so you won't see us together, but it is good to be here in this space. It's a little odd to be here by myself. My voice is echoing in this room, but we're hoping that seeing the familiar cross and communion table behind us will be good for all of us as we worship together. I invite you to join me now in our community prayer. Let us pray. We are grateful, O oh God, for the gift of these, our bodies, in which we live and move. We are miracles of your creation, among the many miracles of your hand. Forgive us for discounting the importance of the physical experience of people, for making faith about the disembodied soul or disconnected mind. Forgive us for not taking seriously the bodily plights of others. Release us from the shame of enjoying our bodies and that of one another in relationships of mutuality. Allow us to be drawn back through our bodies into the larger care of the world. Amen. Our prayers continue in quiet. Amen. Friends, Jesus said, I came to set the prisoner free and know that you have been set free from whatever binds you through the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. We are made new. Thanks be to God. Amen. And I want to invite any of our children who are worshiping with us to join me a little closer to the screen and join my stand-in friends. I wonder how my real heroes are doing today. Hope you're doing fine, doing, enjoying this summer. Again, I can't have you with me here, so the best I can do is get these pretend heroes to be here with me. And Captain America, I noticed that you always wear, well, all of you wear the same thing every Sunday that we do this, but you in particular are wearing some colors that are important for, that's right, that's right, Black Panther, he's wearing the red, white, and blue. It's July 4th weekend, and while we didn't get to celebrate any live fireworks, you know what we did get for July 4th? Red, white, and blue M&Ms. That's right. Now, don't tell my wife or children about this, but I have the whole bag down here just for us, okay? We're not even going to share with them. So, now, Captain, have you noticed that these red, white, and blue M&Ms are the same color as your outfit? They are. Would you give me a hand with something here? Okay. Would you just give me a hand with this? Now, what I'd like for you to do is just show our, our real heroes here the colors of these M&Ms. If you look here, this is a red M&M. Okay. And show them what the white M&M looks like. This is the white M&M. And if you would show them what the blue M&M looks like. And here is the blue. Now, do you notice how... Thank you, Captain. You're, you're always such a good helper. Now, have you noticed that each of these looks... A little different. I wonder what they look like on the inside. What, what's that for? They're, they're brown. Well, how do you know they're brown on the inside? What color do you think they are on the inside? But, but it's red and it's blue and it's white. Spider yes, Spider-Man, you think, you think it's 
The red one? You Okay, well, how about we start with the red one then? You think that it's brown. What color do you think the inside of that M&M is? Is it red or is it brown? Let's find out. Oh, you're right. It is brown. See, it's brown right there on the inside. Since your jaws don't move, I'm just going to eat all of these. So, well, let's try a different one then. How about that? Black Panther, what color do you think the blue one is on the inside? You think it's brown? Oh, you, Black, what do you think brown too? What color do you think this blue one is on the inside? You think it's brown too? Okay, well, let's take a look. It is brown. See? It's brown. It is brown, isn't it? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, how about this white one? Because I've had white chocolate before. Do you think the white one's brown on the inside too? Oh, you think it's you think it's brown also? Okay, well let's find out. It is brown. Wow. Look at that. It's brown. Well, thank you for helping me. So here I'm gonna give you each a couple since you are such good helpers. And since your mouths don't really work. This is just my reason to eat more for myself. <laughs> and I know if you're watching, you probably wish you had some M&Ms. If your parents have some red, white, and blue M&Ms, hopefully they can share with you. Uh, if not, we'll do this time of discovery again someday, and I'll be sure to bring red, white, and blue M&Ms, as long as you don't make fun of me for doing the same time of discovery. But... I wanted to share this because it's interesting to me. We look at those red, white, and blue M&Ms, and they each look different on the outside, but they're the same on the inside. And that's actually a message that's straight out of our faith, out of the message of Jesus Christ in our Bible. That God has made us all the same on the inside, that we all have a heart and a soul and a spirit. And God loves us all, regardless of what we look like on the outside. There is te That's one of the reasons that maybe Jesus was always trying to include people that weren't used to being included in his friend groups. He was including people that were teased or made fun of a lot. He included people that were embarrassed sometimes. And sometimes he even included people that other people thought were mean. He just looked at everyone the way God does. We all look different on the outside, but we're all God's children, no matter what we look like on the outside. We're all loved by God. And you and your friends and our middle school and high school friends have done a really good job of teaching us adults and what that looks like to have lots of friends who look a little different on the outside. So thank you for teaching us that, and I hope you never stop teaching us those things. This Sunday, uh, also, you're going to have a special Sunday School lesson posted on our church's YouTube channel. So whenever you have some time, maybe today or this week, go ahead and take advantage of that. It's a good way to stay connected with everyone and stay connected to your own faith and to God. And in the meantime, we'll say bye. You guys say bye, everybody. As we come to our time of joys and concerns, I do encourage you to share your joys and concerns with the gathered community. You can type them in the comment box, email them to the church staff throughout the week. It is important that we are in prayer for and with one another. On this July 4th weekend, certainly we are in prayer for this country. There has been a lot happening in these last several weeks. So we're simply in prayer that the grace and the love and the hope of God may be known in all people. So let's begin our prayer time today with some quiet, the quiet that will allow you to offer the prayers that are on your hearts and minds, and then I will lead us in prayer together. So let us pray.
Holy One, who calls us into community. May we experience your spirit among us, even as we are gathered in various places, but know that we are joined in this moment. Help us to remember that we are all created in your image, an image of mutuality and love for one another, an image of community with shared respect and mission. Sometimes, though, we do fall short of this image. Sometimes we do not live with the love and respect for others or for ourselves to which you call us. Especially on this 4th of July weekend, O oh God, we consider the ways that our laws may circumvent your will, that our freedom may place chains on others, that our wealth may impoverish others, that our power may come by way of another's weakness. Forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us and immerse us in the beauty of life with you. Enliven us with the intensity of your love. Embolden us with the urgency of your justice. And hear us now, O oh God, as together we pray the prayer that your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. As the lily among the thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree, the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. So is my beloved among the sons. I sat down, I sat down, I sat down, I sat down, I sat His fruit and his food was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, his banner over me was love. He brought me to the banqueting house, his banner over me was love. Stay me with flagons. Come forth me with apples, for I am sick. For I am sick. For I am sick, I am sick of love. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that you stir not up. That you stir not up, that you stir not up, that you stir not up, nor awake, 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 my love to be pleased. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh, leaping upon the Mountains skipping, 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 leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the, the winter is past, the rain is over and come, 
Skipping, 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 skipping up on the mountains, skipping up on the hills. My beloved spake, and said unto me, Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The rain is over, the rain is over, the rain is over and gone. For long the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The scripture reading comes from the Song of Solomon, the second chapter, verses 8 to 13. Listen for what the Spirit is saying to us this morning. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Friends, this is holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. I came back to the sanctuary because so many of you reached out and said it was meaningful for you to see this space last week. It's easy to forget how important physical spaces are to people. After all, we come out of a tradition that uh, is known for destroying spaces. As the Reformation began, our forebears smashed windows broke statues all in the name of combating idolatry. We did away with rituals. We distrusted the body and the senses. Uh, Lining up with the times, we tried to make faith entirely an endeavor of the mind. Sometimes corrections become overcorrections because we all know that physical reality is in fact really important. Material reality is important. Now, you know by now that I don't do a lot with secular holidays in here. We can let society take care of those. That said, it's not lost on me that this year, as we celebrate our Independence Day in this country, that one of the things we're wrestling with is how differently the world is experienced by people with different bodies, different physical realities. Look at how different bodies are treated by the criminal justice system. Look at how different bodies have different levels of access to clean water, breathable air, good schools, safe neighborhoods. You could go on and on. The Presbyterian Church, the denomination of this congregation, just finished its General Assembly. Meets every other year as one body. And one of the disappointments that came out of this year's assembly, if you read a letter signed by many, many of the past moderators of the church, is that the assembly did not address the plight of black girls and black women in our society. These bodies, these physical realities, they are important. I was listening to a podcast recently where Cheryl Swoops was interviewed. Sports fans may remember Cheryl Swoops. She's a famous basketball player. 
And she told a story of just weeks ago, her son going out on a jog. They live in a rural area, a wealthy area. And as her son was running, a sheriff pulled up next to him and said, are you an athlete? And he said, I am. And he said, because there aren't many of you around here. He proceeded to ask him where he lived, exactly where he lived. Now, the exchange didn't get any more aggressive than that, but it was enough to spook Swoops. And so he turned around and, and ran home where his mother was waiting. And now Cheryl Swoops plans her days around when her son is going to go jogging so she can get in her car and follow him to make sure that he comes home safely. Paul Roberts, the, oh, and I should say, uh, Swoop's son is 23. I think many mothers think that kind of hovering should be done by then. Paul Roberts, who I started to mention a moment ago, is the president of Johnson C. Smith. That's a predominantly black seminary, Presbyterian seminary in Atlanta. He posted a picture not long ago of Sitting in a lawn chair in his driveway seems innocuous enough until you realize the context is that his teenage son was out jogging and he had now taken to keeping vigil in his driveway to make sure he came home every time. I've heard too many stories from students and faculty of color at San Francisco Theological Seminary right here in San Anselmo who talk about the way they are treated in this our community of Marin. Too many stories to think they are isolated incidents. Our experiences are very much shaped by the bodies that we inhabit. I was listening to another interview not long ago in preparation for this discussion series we've been having through the Outreach Commission on Race. It was between Brene Brown and Austin Channing Brown. And I have to confess, at first I was a little bit, I don't know, frustrated with the conversation because it seemed like the first, I don't know, 15 minutes or so was just two friends catching up and kind of small talking. And then they got into this long, well, it seemed long to me, uh, conversation about, about giving themselves facials and, and what products they used and how they put that into their daily routine. And I, I found myself saying, well, come on, let's get to the meat of the conversation. And that's an interesting word choice. Because then it hit me. Our bodies are where we bear the scars of our traumas. Bodies are where we carry our pain. And what these women were doing is not just talking about superficial vanity. They were talking about recognizing in very physical ways the toll taken on their bodies by their lived experiences. They were recognizing what they had been through. What does Jesus do after he's been raised from the dead when he appears to his disciples? You remember? He shows them his scars because that's how they know who he is. And we too know something about who we are and how we've lived based on what our bodies have experienced and endured. And so these women taking to this daily practice of facials and skin care, what they were doing what they were doing, well, these were restorative practices, powerful practices of acknowledging their lived realities and tending to those wounds because if we don't tend to the wounds, we're far more likely to succumb to them and we're far more likely to inflict them on others. See, our bodies are not only the site of our pain, but they can be the site of our healing. I think many of us 
know this. I can't tell you the number of people who have said to me how exhausting this period has been. Just exhausting and relentless. Because you're feeling it in your body and your body is longing for healing. And while others watch some of us say this for the first time with all the patience they can muster, which is more than they should have to, they say to us, well, welcome to our world. Welcome to our scars. But as I alluded to, the sight of our scars can be the sight of our own resurrections, our own healing. I've told you before, perhaps, about a church in Atlanta, Presbyterian Church, that has as part of its ministry to folks who experience homelessness a foot clinic where they literally wash the feet. Now that's biblical of those who make their homes on the streets and they tend to their wounds. I may have told you before about a Vietnamese woman who taught and taught people to, uh, or gave and taught people to give manicures and pedicures in refugee camps. Not just trying to give them a marketable skill, but knowing that she, that she could bring them back to life by tending their bodies and teaching them to tend one another's bodies. All this talk we see in this day and age about body image in, in an era in which we're on display so often through screens, constantly being evaluated and shamed for how we look. Thankfully, people have started to recognize the importance of body positivity and body image. This is all meant to signal to people the countercultural truth that your body is a reason for your acceptance, not for your rejection. And I want to be careful when I say that I'm not speaking about those who have modified their bodies as a way of coming into greater alignment with who they believe they are, who their God-given identity is. What they're seeking is a harmony between their body and their gender identity. I think that's what we're all seeking is a harmony with our body and our God-given sense of who we are. If we're not careful, though, we can send all kinds of dangerous messages in the church in particular. If we're not careful, we can read scripture to see an anti-body bias. But that's a shallow understanding of Paul, for example, uh, uh, Paul's opposition between the spirit and the flesh, it's not as simple as spirituality versus our skin. It's more about worldly values and heavenly values. In Jesus, we know Jesus had a bodily ministry. The power of the Christian message is that God took on what? Flesh. This is what theologian Kristen Johnston Largen writes about Jesus. She says, the emphasis on Jesus' physical humanity is linked to an emphasis on his physical ministry, in which the physical bodies of the people around him are on center stage. They're not just the houses for the soul, my words. The diseased bodies he healed, the possessed bodies he freed, and the polluted bodies he purified. Without a doubt, she says, bodies mattered to Jesus, who came to bring salvation to them in their flesh, in their bodies. Jesus did not simply proclaim a spiritualized, disembodied message about salvation. He didn't just talk about salvation. He embodied salvation in his own flesh and blood. Jesus brought salvation to people in their bodies by breaking bread with them, by staying in their houses, walking with them, and laying his hands on them. Do you know what one of the earliest heresies of the church was? One of the first ones they named and denounced. It was the belief that Jesus didn't really exist in body. He was just a spiritual figure. They said, no. God took on flesh. And so we come to this bodily passage 
from a song of Solomon for today. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. This feminine voice of scripture, I guess depending on how you read it. Now, I've got to tell you, the lectionary is too shy to give you the good stuff from Song of Solomon. This is nothing what you just heard. Song of Solomon is an erotic poem. Read it for yourself and feel free to try and argue with that conclusion. Oh, the church has tried. They spent eons trying to make a grand and safe metaphor out of it, but it's not just metaphor. Solomon was known for his wisdom, and here his wisdom is bodily. This life, this world is experienced through the senses, through these physical realities that we inhabit, and God saw that it was good. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. What do you think the invitation is to go and do? It's not to be on a committee. Communion, maybe. Speaking of communion, when Jesus was with his disciples and took bread, he didn't say, this is an abstract concept given generically. He said, this is my body for you. May we yearn for and work for the day when people want to inhabit their own skin as much as we want to inhabit this sanctuary. Amen. preface this uh, with the fact that our communion is coming up just in a few minutes. So if you forgot to grab your elements, your uh, solid and your liquid, if you will, <laughs> your bread and your, your uh, body and your blood, if you will, uh, this might be a good time to go grab it if you're watching this live. The ministry of Westminster Presbyterian Church and all of you continues through this summer as we're all start to be scattered into different parts of the country. I know some of you are fortunate enough to travel a bit. While you're gone, there is several resources for you, one of which is today, our, as mentioned during Time of Discovery, our children's uh, Sunday school class has a video offering on YouTube and on the church website. That's really for K through fifth grade, could probably benefit from that. Also, our middle schoolers our meeting once a month over the summer. That would be today, the first Sunday of the month over Zoom as well. So wherever you are in the country, you could actually join us for our middle school youth group. And uh, we also continue to have a couple more of our prodigal parent video series posted every Wednesday online. And lastly, something you may have seen on our Facebook and Instagram channels, we have published a 30-day devotional called The Weirdest Summer Ever. Bethany and Rob and I have worked together to bring that. It is intended for our youth for 6th through 12th grade, but really adults would enjoy it. I'm enjoying doing it. Uh, you know, older children might enjoy doing it, and we would love it if you take advantage of that. It's a really neat devotional that, you know, the three of us kind of help 
process through some of the things that have happened this summer, sheltering in place, uh, protests for racial justice, all the different things that our youth are seeing in the world. We miss getting to do walk that journey along with them. So we're trying to give as much as we can and, and I guess be as much of a resource as we can along the way in some virtual means if we when we can't be in person. Um, so, of course, uh, given that all this continues, we continue to give and to share with others. We, of course, uh, appreciate your gifts and your offerings through this uh, strange time and this weirdest summer ever. You can, of course, always give by going to wpctiboron.org slash give. We have text to give options. You can always mail a check. Uh, we try to do it however is easiest for you. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday holiday weekend, and let's prepare our hearts for communion. And as we prepare to share in communion today, I invite you, if you haven't already, to find something to eat and something to drink. You know, traditionally, we use bread or a cracker and some juice, but it doesn't have to be that. You know, use whatever is convenient, whatever you have on hand. God knows what to do with those elements. And as we gather our elements, we are reminded that all are welcome here at the table. All are invited to share in this meal together. Now, as we come to the table, we are reminded that Jesus invites us to come in peace. So if you are watching worship with someone else, I invite you to share the peace of Christ with one another. And if not, I share the peace of Christ with you. May the peace of Christ be with you, not only in this meal, but always. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Come from the north and the south, come from the east and the west, Come sit at the table in the kingdom of God. On the 4th of July weekend, people traditionally gather around tables. Picnic tables, dining room tables, kitchen tables, to share in a meal together. However, this year is different. It's substantially different. Our July 4th gatherings looked different yesterday. And gathering around this table looks different. I'm here by myself. But perhaps all of this difference is a good opportunity to remember what gathering around this table or any of God's tables is all about. You know, Jesus' table is a table where outsiders are welcome. It's where the least of these were invited. It's a place where the privileged also were welcome, but they were invited to give the seats of honor to those who had previously not had access to those seats. So we remember that all are invited to this table to whatever table you are at right now. You don't have to earn a seat. You certainly don't have to fight for a seat. You simply have to pull up the chair that has already been offered. Will you join with me? God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. It is right and a good and holy thing to give our praise to you this day, almighty God. You unleashed your creative power and a world blossomed. You bestowed upon every living thing life and breath, color and movement. No matter how many battles we wage within and between ourselves and against you, your promise, vision, 
and gift of peace and abundance continues. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. To those who were imprisoned by status, law, illness, poverty, gender, age, disease, he said, you are set free. You are a child of God. He invited disciples, friends, and strangers alike to his tables. He proclaimed grace to all with whom he broke bread. He proclaimed love to all with whom he shared the cup. And so, God of grace and love, we join with all the prophets and saints in every time and place, lifting up our voices in celebration of you. Will you repeat after me? Holy, holy, holy God, holy, holy, holy God, everywhere we see your glory. Everywhere we see your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Now we remember together that last night of Jesus' life. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This is my body broken for you, and as you eat it, remember me. On the night he was betrayed, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he lifted it up. This is my life poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my life poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is the feast of God for the people of God. Let us now partake in this meal together. This is the bread of life. And this is the cup of blessing. Now let us be in prayer together. Holy God, having been fed body and soul at your table, may we be free to go into your world, loving without condition, inviting without hesitance, living without reservation, and proclaiming your love to all the world. Amen. Let us now join together in our closing hymn. Children's dreams are fed Love grows in
flush with springs, the hills and mountains shall bring forth with singing. We shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace, as all the world in wonder echoes shalom. Hope blooms in a weary world when creatures once forlorn find wilderness. And now receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God who is Father and Mother of us all, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen.